5 Interesting Stuff Number 5 these are kids remote learning during the polio outbreak in 1940. The teachers would teach their lessons over the radio, and the best part was each class was only 15 minutes long. Number 4. This is theorized to be the most likely way the East Island heads were moved into position. Number 3. Raynaud syndrome is induced by cold temperatures or stress. It makes the blood vessels spasm, which restrict the blood flow to the hands. It's accounted that when the blood flow does return, it's extremely painful, kind of like a shock. Number 2. Sex workers in ancient Greece would advertise their services by wearing shoes that would make an imprint into the sand. The print would read, follow me, so the customers knew where to find him. And number one, some fish have shown passive aggressive behavior. These two are competing for burrow territory, which everyone gives up first, has to leave. That's a pretty petty behavior for a fish. Top three most painful bones to break. Number 3. Your coccyx, also known as your tailbone. It seems like it wouldn't make that much of an impact, but it can cause temporary paralysis. It hurts to stand, because of the pressure on your back. It hurts to sit, because of the pressure on your back. It hurts to lay, because of the pressure on your back. This is on the list because there's no such thing as a comfortable position with a broken tailbone. Number 2. Your clavicles, also known as your collarbones. What can potentially make this worse than number 1 is that it's the most common bone in your body to break. It could take longer than average to heal, and whatever side you break, you better hope it's not your dominant hand. Because daily things like riding, eating, and wiping your own butt becomes nearly impossible to do without overwhelming pain. And number one, your femur, also known as the thigh bone. It's the longest, strongest, thickest bone in the human body that starts from your hip and ends at your knee. That means it needs a significant amount of pressure or impact to break. And because this bone is so thick, snapping it takes a while to heal. A complete break to heal process could take four months to half a year. That's a long time to wobble around on one leg. Top 3 Close Calls with Death Number 3 While trying to speed through traffic, a motorcycle is rammed into the back of a car. By some sort of strange luck, or skill maybe, he lands like he's Spider-Man on top of the car he hit. Usually high-speed motorcycle accidents are a lot more… deadly. Number 2 This guy with no sense of caution skateboards down a hill with a dead car and, well, just see for yourself. Um, so there's a… Uh, definitely… Oh shit, I don't have to my window. my door is open, oh shit! Oh shit! Oh! Oh my fucking god! Guys, fuck! Holy shit, you guys just saw that! Holy f Guys, my bush light is gone! Number one, a couple on an evening stroll are suddenly interrupted when a speeding car came barreling their way. The man does what every person claims they would do in a split second scenario by leaping out of the way, not only saving his life, but the girl's too, by grabbing her when he jumped, which had ended in one or both of them in a casket, was totally avoided by some serious reflexes leaving just the guy with the broken leg. And hey, since you're watching this on my Instagram, here's a bonus clip. Here's you go. I love helmets! I love helmets! Time out. Commercial break. Only 7% of you guys are subscribed. Help me change that. 92.4 of you guys, subscribe right now while you're watching the video. That way you never miss one of these. Also, feel free to join the Discord down below. Alright, commercial break over. The loneliest place on earth. There's a common saying that says 80% of people will die within a 50 mile range of where they were born. And because of probability's sake, you were most likely born near a town of people. But what if you hated people and just wanted to get as far away as possible? Where would that be? Point Nemo. It looks like a speck of nothing on the planet of mostly ocean. Because people don't live here, we rarely see the side of the globe. The closest humans are located on Easter Island, which is over 1,600 miles away. It takes an over 15 day trip by boat to get there. And weirdly enough, the closest humans to you are the astronauts aboard the International Space Station. As the closest people, like I said, are 1,600 miles away, but the ISS orbits above at only 240 miles, which leads to the title of loneliest man in the universe, Michael Collins. He went to the moon with Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong, but I doubt you've ever heard his name before, because he didn't step foot on the moon. Michael Collins orbited around the moon, waiting for the other two, and while in orbit around the backside of the moon, his communication was cut off for 45 minutes. 
making him the farthest human from any of the humans, with no way to communicate, a small amount of pressure on his control stick, and he would have left orbit, floating off into deep space for eternity. So as lonely as you feel sometimes, look at the upside. At least you're not Michael Collins lonely. How different animals see the world. Number 5. Dogs. We've heard people say dogs see in black and white, but we all know that's not true. They specialize in seeing green and yellow tones. This is how we see the world, and this is how your dog sees. Red toys aren't the best for them. Number 4. Humans have pretty pathetic night vision, but geckos pick up far more light and color. Our vision in dim light looks similar to this, but geckos see something like this. It almost looks like regular daylight. Number 3. Your average garden snail has terrible vision, and it actually is colorblind. We see them like this, but they see each other like this. Just barely enough to focus in to see when they're about to be eaten. Number 2. If you think snail vision is bad, the giant clam's eye's only job is to detect movement. This is how you see, and weirdly, this is how they see. That's a sad life. And number 1. The jumping wolf spider actually are able to see more colors than us, and at close ranges even have better focusing abilities. We see like this, and they see like this, which is extremely comparable to humans, and are actually known for their near perfect vision, which is necessary. They're just so darn cute. I love being a second grade teacher. The kids in my class are so cute and innocent. They're at the perfect age. I actually teach sixth grade, but I quickly realized that was a mistake. Sixth grade is where the cliques form, the bullying flourishes, and the kids truly learn how to be terrible to each other. By that age, they're corrupted by gruesome videos on the internet. They have no respect for authority and no desire to learn. Now second grade, children are far better. Their parents are still making an attempt to show them from the harshness of the world. They look at me with wide eyes, eager to learn, drinking in all that I share with them. My favorite day, is Valentine's Day. The children make little paper pockets that they tape at their desk to be filled with cards and candy. This year, I bake delicious cookies at home, and I arrived early to deliver one to each student. I smile as the kids arrive, dressed in red and pink. I smile as they happily tear into their construction paper holders to see what's inside. I smile as they give me the adorable, thank you, Miss Collins, once they eat the cookies I made for them. I smile as they bite into them. I smile as one by one, they fall to the ground, choking and vomiting and turning blue. After all, they're at such a cute age, it would be a shame to let them grow up. Top 3 Jobs That No Longer Exist Some people's reasoning for why we shouldn't advance our technology is that people will lose their jobs, though that's happened for centuries. Like number 3, the knocker-upper. Before digital alarm clocks, and later on cell phones could just wake us up with convenient alarm clocks. Up until the 70s, a knocker-upper would get up in the early morning, usually in industrial towns, with a bamboo stick and knock on people's bedroom windows until they woke up. Number 2, a pin setter. Bowling alley electronics didn't exist quite yet, but customers themselves weren't expected to pick up their own bowling pins. Usually young boys would work in the back of alleys, resetting the pins every couple of bowls. Sadly, evil technology took their jobs. And number one, before the times of just walking to your freezer and getting ice, someone had to cut that ice from a frozen lake for the ice to be easily accessible and to store food longer. So ice cutting was a winter job, an extremely dangerous one at that. It's still done today, but not for food storage and not nearly as dangerous. Have you ever been in a situation where you feel like everyone's eyes were on you? Maybe you stepped into class late, or maybe you were walking in the mall and it felt as if everyone is inspecting on how you walk, so in turn, you actually start to walk weird? The Spotlight Effect A tendency to believe you're being noticed more than you actually are, but don't feel alone on this, because most humans suffer from this in one way or another. Being that you are the center of your own world, it's usually overestimated that we hold a bigger plot in someone else's world. But in all actuality, everyone's so caught up in their own spotlight that yours is more of a dim light bulb in comparison. The severity of this effect can increase if you're also affected by the illusion of transparency, where you overestimate the degree to which your mental state is known. So feeling like the spotlight is on you can make you feel anxious, and in turn, making you feel like everyone knows that you are anxious. But that's just from your brain's overactivity, and you're actually just standing there like, so nobody even knows. The best remedy to combat this is to focus your attention outward, to stop the inward thinking anxiety. This will help you notice how little people are actually paying attention to you in your miscalculated judgments. The Montauk Monster On July 23rd, 2008, just off the coast of a New York Island beach, Jenna Hewitt and three of her friends claimed to find a creature that had yet to be discovered, and moreover, claiming it had defining features of multiple animals in one, seemingly stout, hairless, with almond-shaped eyes, claws, and having a beak. But this just happened to be the start of the monsters washing up on shore. People said they were raccoons, but their legs were too long. People claimed they were turtles, but obviously it's not. Sloths, cats, rodents, even pit bulls. But the Living Marine Research Institute at Stonebrook University disproved all these options, 
But there was one option they couldn't disprove. That it was a genetically modified creature. The assumption that this creature was an animal experiment gone wrong stems from the fact that the discovery of these monsters are located 15 miles away from Plum Island, home of the Animal Disease Center of New York, a facility that conducts top secret biological experiments. This place is closed to the public. So I guess it's up to your imagination what's really going on in there. Are these Montauk monsters some kind of genetic monster? Are these just bloated animals happen to be hairless? Really, it's anyone's opinion. Because every time these monsters are spotted, instead of allowing scientists to test on them, they are always disposed of. So this mystery may just stay a mystery. Can you help me? I'd seen that boy before. It was at the supermarket. I felt a tug on my sleeve, and there he was, innocent little face looking up at me. He asked if I could help him. I didn't even get a chance to reply before the boy's dad appeared, apologizing, asking if the boy was bothering me. Of course he wasn't. Don't be silly. He took the boy's hand, saying sorry again as he walked away. The child's head dropped. I guessed he was in trouble for leaving his parents, or even talking to a stranger. Three days later, I'm seeing that boy's face again, on the news. His body's just been found. A couple on the screen now, being interviewed. They're distraught. The boy's parents. I feel sick to my stomach. The man on the TV is not the same man I saw at the supermarket.